Hey guys, Abraham here presenting yet another free video for you. This video is from our newly released course, the Mechanical Animal Making for Production. You can check this down here in the description. And for the next four days until March 6th, we're going to have a 90% discount. So this is the best time to get the course and learn as much as you can. In this video, I'm going to present a very cool way to make a render so that you could present not only this work, but any other production that you do in 3D in the best possible way. So enjoy. Hey guys, welcome back to the next part of our series. Today we're going to continue with a render setup. And this is a very basic render setup. I've done this a thousand times, but it's a really, really good one again to create a library of, um, of progress. That way we're going to be able to see how we're progressing throughout this project. So as you guys know, I love this Polyhaven site. It's free. It has all of this free HDRIs that we can use. And I'm going to be using this Christmas Photo Studio 07. Why? Because it has this sort of like warm tone to it. And it looks very, very, very nice. So once you download this, you're going to copy this whole thing or the, the HDRI to the source images of your project. Very, very important that we jump to our project and inside of... Um, of our project, we go to source images because remember that this is the part or this is the place where uh, Maya is always going to look for an image first. Once we have that, I'm going to create an infinite plane, which is a very basic background for a character. I'm going to grab uh, this edge back here. I'm going to move it all the way up so that we can create a nice backdrop. And uh, there's a couple of ways to do this. I personally like to just grab this edge loops right here, double click to select them and create a nice smooth transition. So when we press number three, we get this very nice soft effect. I'm going to push this like this. I'm going to extend this a little bit more so we get more space and the character is not really close to the, to the background. And I'm going to scale this. And this thing right here, we're going to delete the history, freeze the transformations, and center the pivot. We're going to call this a backdrop underscore a geo because it's a geo uh, here inside of our scene. And that's it. I'm going to, as you can see, I accidentally created several like cameras and you can see these cameras right here. I hate seeing them. So on the outliner, which is this little thing right here at the side, you can press H to hide those. And then this perspective one, we delete and that's pretty much it. So all of these geometries that we have right here, I'm going to control G to group them. So now there is single group and this group, of course, we're going to call this uh, lion blocking. Now, one thing that I don't like about this lion blocking is that all of the pieces that we have right here have names in history, and that can be problematic. So how do we solve that? Very easily. First, we delete history, we freeze the transformations, no need to center the pivot really, but we do need to rename this because as you can see, we have this P cylinder one. And if at any point I import anything out from a different source that's called P cylinder one, it's going to create a conflict because inside of Maya, you can never have two things that are named the same. Okay. So to alleviate that or remedy that, I'm going to select all of these guys. And up here, there's this option. Usually it's set to absolute transform. But if you click this guy right here, you can change this to rename. I'm going to call this block in, block in underscore, the geo underscore. And if I hit enter, you're going to see all of these guys get renamed to a different number. Block in one, two, three, four, five, six. Whatever, we're not really going to be using this, guys, uh, but we need to have them, right? So that way we avoid any potential issue with having things that are named the same. These three image planes, I'm going to control G to group them up, and I'm going to call this for the image planes. Again, just to have an easy access to all of them in case we need to hide them or we need to change this or change them or do whatever. I'm actually going to grab this group, this image planes group, and over here on the display layers, I'm going to create a layer called a, well, it's just a new layer, but I'm going to use this last button, which creates a new layer with the selected objects. And this layer right here, I'm going to call image planes. You can change the color if you want. It's fine. Oh, it already image planes layer. There we go. See how it got the, the, the message like, hey, you can't have two things named the same thing. Well, there we go. So we got image planes right here. And at any point, I can just like turn off the visibility and they're going to be gone. Now that we have this, we need to bring in our HDRI. We're going to be using Arnold Renderer. If you've never used it before, don't worry. It's going to be very easy. Windows, Settings and Preferences, Plugin Manager. And we're going to look for MTOA, Maya to Arnold. This is the basic uh, Arnold uh, plugin. And as you can see, it's turned on. We shouldn't have any issues. I have mine set to auto load so that we don't have to load it every single time. And that's going to give me access to all of the things inside of the Arnold tab right here. So Arnold and all of these things right here. 
I'm gonna go to lights, sky dome light. It's gonna create this big sphere right here. You can make this bigger. The scale really doesn't matter. Uh, you can make this as big or as small as you want. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. And then if I press control A, we're gonna jump into the, um, into the properties and on the color, we can select a file. And on that file, we can select our EXR, which as uh, probably you might know, this EXR, these HDRI images, they're called high dynamic range images because they have a lot of information inside of them. They're not normal images. So it knows what parts of the image are like darker or uh, brighter. Now this one, I'm gonna rotate a little bit so we get this very nice intense light hitting my subject from the front. So somewhere around that line right there. This right here, I'm gonna change its name and I'm gonna call this HDRI, just again, to have things clean. Uh, I'm, then gonna, I'm then gonna create a new camera because we need a camera that's gonna be the camera that we're always, always gonna be using. So rendering, camera, panels, look through selected, okay? That way we're inside this camera, which is pretty much like a perspective camera. I'm gonna turn on the resolution gate right here and we're gonna look for a sort of uh, a nice like three quarter view. Like we can go perfectly to the side view, but I think I wanna go like a little bit to the three quarter view like this. So we can see a little bit more of the lion and uh, we can see the evolution. Now, I know that we're eventually gonna have the main, so I don't wanna change anything about the camera. I want this camera to be the same camera from now until the very end. So I'm gonna uh, like, calculate that there's gonna be a little bit of extra volume. I'm gonna keep my character like this. I do wanna see a little bit more of the tail, so I'm gonna do something like this. There we go. Now this backdrop right here, as you can see, is no longer in line with the camera. So I'm gonna rotate the backdrop a little bit, move it along like this. Let's go back to the camera, panels, look to select it, so that we can see a straight backdrop on the back. There we go. So now we're gonna go to the camera and we're gonna call this shot cam. Again, it's gonna be the main camera that we're always gonna be using and things are gonna get a little bit more intense as we keep going. I'm gonna just rotate a little bit. Do not rotate the character. It's the camera that's rotating. The character is always gonna be modeled in the exact same position. There we go. Now, uh, just to make this a little bit fancier, I'm gonna add three spheres that you normally find in some renders. These spheres are reference spheres that you can use to make sure that the exposure, values and everything that you have on your render are like properly calibrated. So we're gonna add these three spheres on the top right corner, make them smaller. We don't need them to be like super, super big. We want the main thing to be our character right here. And uh, that's it. Now we can do a quick test. So let's control S and if I go Arnold and render, we're gonna get the render of the perspective view. To get the render of our actual view, I'm gonna go to here and change this to shot cam. Now if we render, this is what the shot cam is looking at. And as you can see, we get some very, very nice lights, very, very nice colors. It's a little bit noisy. It doesn't have the best quality. Let's fix that. So since again, we wanna build up our evidence, our folder of evidence here, I'm gonna change the system to GPU. I want the render to be done with the GPU. So the first time it might take a little bit longer, but it's gonna be faster. And I wanna change the size of my render from 960 by 540 to full HD which is HD 10A. Now when we render, it's gonna take a little bit longer, but it should be less noisy because we have more pixels. There we go. Now, I think the spheres are a little bit small, so let's go back to our shot cam, panels, look through selected. We're gonna grab this guys right here, make them a little bit bigger, there we go. It's a little bit better. Let's do another render, that looks way better. Cool. So now that we have a nice uh, composition, I think I'm gonna go a little bit lower with the composition. So we're kind of looking at the character from, from the, like a lower section. There we go. Let's bring the camera up. Just again, I'm imagining that here's where the where the main is gonna be. There we go. That's a lot better. Cool. So now we can assign. Waiting about the this thing a little bit. We can assign the materials that we're gonna be using. So the background. I'm gonna assign a new material. Arnold. I'm, I'm, again, I'm right-clicking, assign new material, Arnold, and I'm gonna assign an AI standard surface. This AI standard surface is gonna be really rough and we're gonna make it a dark. Why darker? Because when we do the render, I want the lion to be the important uh, character. So it seems like we can go even darker. There we go, that's a lot better. So really dark background, really rough so that we don't get any reflections or anything and that way we can pay more attention to the character. The character itself, the lion blocking, right-click, assign new material, Arnold, AI standard surface. 
And this one, it's going to be a sort of beige color. I like using this sort of beige color. It reminds me of like clay. And uh, this that we're building is pretty much like a clay render. So I'm going to do a render right there. And there we go. As you can see, it's also a little bit lighter, which is great because we can see the character uh, even better. I think it's a little bit too light though. So I'm going to bring this down a little bit more. There we go. That's perfect. Finally, the spheres. We're going to add some materials. Right click, assign new material, Arnold. AI standard surface. The first one's going to be pure white, pure white with a high roughness. Okay. And as you can see, even though I do a uh, pure white here, we're not really seeing a pure white. Let's do a render and see. Yeah, that's, that looks good. And this is furiously important because it's going to tell us how the whites are going to react on our scene. So as long as we don't overexpose the sphere, which is pure white, then usually our scene is going to be uh, good. The second one is going to be a middle gray. So Arnold AI standard surface. And here's a very common uh, like uh, confusion. People will normally select this and say 0.5, and they think that that's middle gray, but that's not actually middle gray. As you can see, it's quite lighter than middle gray. And that's because it's using this rendering space. I'm going to change this to display space. I'm going to make sure that on display space, it says 0.5. That's middle gray, okay? Then if I render, that's going to give us a middle gray result. We can, of course, uh, I do think I'm going to increase the roughness as well, so we can appreciate the middle gray better. And finally, this one's going to be a chrome ball. Assign a new material, Arnold, AI standard surface, and this is going to be full metal, full white, and low roughness, really low roughness. What that's going to do, it's going to create a chrome ball. And again, that's going to be useful to see how our reflections are happening in our scene. So this is not looking bad. It's looking quite, uh, quite nice. What we're going to do now is I'm going to bring this thing down a little bit more probably like half, half a point right there. So it's a little bit darker and we can see way more, more contrast. I like that. Some people like to keep it really light. Uh, it gives more of a photo studio vibe. I think we can go probably around there. I think that looks good. And now we need to play with lights a little bit. I'm just gonna add a very, very, very simple three point light setup. So the way I like to do my setup is I like to grab my HDRI and I'm gonna reduce the exposure to something like a minus two. This is going to bring the amount of light on our scene way, way lower. You can see the reflections become way, way more um, like uh, desaturated or there's a lot less reflection there. And now we're going to go to our node lights and we're going to create a new area light. This area light is going to be a big area light so that we get soft shadows. The bigger the light, the softer the shadows. And we're going to point this towards our character in this direction. Exposure-wise, we usually need big numbers when the scene is really big, like this real-world scale. So I'm going to start with 18 exposure, and let's give it a shot. As you can see, not enough. Straight 20. A lot better. 21. There we go. 22. A little bit too much. So I think 21 is our magic number. And if I want more light closer to the character, well, we can bring the light closer as well, like that. Once we render, we're going to have a really nice, like, presentation here for a character, nice sh soft shadow on the ground as well. Stop the render. I'm going to duplicate this light, bring it to the other side, and this is going to help a something called my rim light. Now this one, I'm going to make it smaller and I am going to use color temperature and bring this up so that we get a cool color temperature. And if we do this, you're going to see that we get this very cool effect. However, it's contaminating the scene a little bit on this side, as you can see. And this happens because the area light is pretty much spreading in a 180 degree uh, radius. If we bring this spread down, we're going to be focusing the light, but we're also going to be overexposing certain things. In this case is not that bad. It seems to be working quite nice. I'm going to do it a little bit more. There we go. That's a lot better. You can see how we're getting the long shadow now on this side, but it's a little bit too overexposed. So I'm going to bring this down to something like a 19. So we don't have as much light. It's going to be a nice light right here. It's going to hit, as you can see, the spheres. The spheres are also a really good example of how this light is affecting our scene. Uh, but we're not going to like overdo it. And that's it. Final thing that we need to do, we need to do a, a quick cleanup. So let's call this a sphere. That's the second one. That's M uh, gray. Or let's just call this gray sphere underscore Geo, oh, underscore Geo. This is Chrome. 
chromosphere underscore geo and this is white sphere underscore geo this is going to be our key light and this is going to be our rim light okay now one more thing that i forgot to do when i was creating the materials we also need to name these materials what they are so this is going to be m backdrop this is going to be m as in material play this is going to be m white this is going to be m gray and this is going to be m pro there we go grab all of this guys freeze transformation delay history center pivot uh, the shotgun, it's it's right there. One quick thing about the shotgun, a lot of people like to scale this up so they can see it on the scene. I don't recommend that. You should go here to the display options and there's the locator scale. Ooh, object display, locator scale, change this one. So like a 20 or like a 100 if you want so that it's easier to select. Don't scale the camera. It could cause a lot of issues. The camera, we know that this is the position that we want. Lock it, right click, lock selected. That's not gonna move, okay? And now I'm going to grab the HDRI, the shotgun, the three spheres, and the two lights. Control G, and I'm going to call this render setup. Okay? So when we're modeling, we're just going to hide that. Oh, backdrop as well. Little mouse and drag and drop. There we go. When we're modeling, we're just going to drag that one, and that's it. We just we just model without having any, um, any interference. And at any point, I can just bring it in and just do a quick render to save our progress. So if we render now, should be exactly the same. How do we eliminate the noise? If you are the proud owner of a NVIDIA GPU, you can go to imagers and use the optics imager. If you don't have an, a GPU from NVIDIA, I believe you can still use the denoiser OIDEN, which might be a little bit like slower, but still gonna give you a really nice result. So if I add this denoiser right here, again, it's right here on the little cogwheel, um, the image is gonna be perfectly, perfectly. Look at that. Beautiful. And again, at the end, and you probably already saw this in the intro video, you're going to see all of the different stages through which we went with this particular character until we have the final result. So I'm going to save this image real, kill, uh, real quick here. Very important thing on save image options, you want to make sure that you're using this view transform use display settings so that you get exactly what we're seeing right here. Save image, and it's going to be saved to images. We're going to call this lion guardian underscore zero zero one and there we go that's it for now guys i'll see you back on the next one bye bye